scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. As a spiritual system that was designed for the excelling and the advancement of the saints, while I sat back and watched the brief recap, I was so blessed already by the thoughts of the man of God he was communicating and challenging us to understand the systems and the ways of God the victory of the believer in this kingdom does not just depend on the reality of the finished work of Christ but it depends on the depth of our comprehending the truths of the kingdom just because these realities have been established in Christ does not mean that we will automatically walk into the fullness of that experience. The Bible says in Psalm 82 and verse 5, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you not some of you are children of the most high the tragedy is in the next verse but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes hallelujah so it takes comprehending the ways of god to be able to rise and to excel paul was speaking to the church in ephesus and he said i went up by revelation it takes light to rise more than desire psalm 60 and verse 1 arise shine for your light is come arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you are we together so conferences like these are essentially feasts of light where god grants us access to high level spiritual illumination so that on the strength of this truth we can now run he said right prosperously because of truth amen the priesthood ministry of prayer is one of the mysteries given to the saints as our weapons of victory now when you come into the faith life haven't encountered the son of god the bible lets us know that the blessings that you receive for your encounter with the son of the living God is life eternal. What we call Zoe. Are we still together? Yes. This is the testimony. Apostle John said that God has given us eternal life and that this life was so constructed that you have to encounter the son to have that life. So when you receive the son and you now become a recipient of eternal life, the next assignment of the Holy Spirit in your life is to walk in partnership with the Word to begin the ministry of transformation. Transformation. What is transformation? The name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. And that happens by the renewal of your mind, the Bible says. Be not conformed. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech thee therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies unto God you know and all of that a living sacrifice which is your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world 
is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with the system he says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind hallelujah so the holy spirit now begins to help us now he begins to open us up to the systems of the kingdom you read from scripture there are keys of the kingdom is that true jesus was teaching and he said i will give you the keys to the kingdom or the keys of the kingdom there is only one key to the kingdom jesus but when you are in the kingdom there are the keys of the kingdom the truths and the mysteries by which you reign and you excel in experience are we learning already and one of those keys systems of advantage given to the believer to reign experientially is the priesthood ministry of prayer jesus himself began to teach on the subject of prayer there was something that the disciples of john some of who would later become the disciples of jesus john also taught them about prayer but when jesus came there was an approach that he had to prayer that brought perpetual results and the disciples were surprised what formula was this man using that was producing victory in prayer results in prayer and then they said teach us to pray that means you don't just pray by praying you are taught to pray hallelujah and tonight i just hope to capture a few dimensions in prayer just to share with us and then we'll have the time to pray as god grants us grace tonight in jesus name psalm 65 and verse 2 let's do a few scripture readings psalm 65 and verse 2 will we have it projected thank you psalm 65 and verse 2 it says oh thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come oh thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh another word is all men clearly from this scripture we see that prayer is for men god does not pray but prayer is for men it's a system of victory that was given to all men luke chapter 18 and verse 1 when you read that scripture jesus gave a parable illustrating a thought and he said he spake this parable to the end that men ought always to pray that means you do not pray because you are a prayer warrior you do not pray because you are a man of god you pray because you are a man the moment you carry this human nature the bible mandates that you must pray jesus never prayed as god but when he became man he prayed and now that he returned back to heaven as the man he's still praying even on the throne prayer is for men are we together psalms 4 and verse 1 second scripture psalms 4 and verse 1 it says hear me when i call O god of my righteousness thou hast enlarged me when i was in distress have mercy upon me and hear my prayer these were the contemplations of the psalmist calling upon the god who hears prayers prayer is very important but accurate prayer is most important many believers pray but few believers obtain results the disciples of john were prayerful people their request was to bring them to a point of accuracy in prayer their problem was not prayerlessness their problem was that they were not obtaining results in prayer he said teach us to pray as john taught his disciples there is something about your prayer life and your prayer ministry and jesus began to point a few areas and correct them to the end that they would pray accurately and effectively hallelujah The first thing i want to teach us tonight is the assignment of prayer because most people do not understand the role that prayer was assigned to play in the life of the believer now please look up 
you have to understand that jesus did not just give us a key he gave us keys someone say keys keys here represent bodies of spiritual truth given to the saints so that as we engage them we rise and our lives become reflections of god's desire for us most believers have not taken time to study the keys of the kingdom so many times we just pick a key for instance prayer for instance giving for instance fasting and we hope and believe that just by having access to one key we will be able to rise and thrive i think um, this concept of embracing the whole counsel of god is where the body of christ may have missed it and is now paying for it because we see the lopsidedness in the christian experience of many believers which is traceable to the dimensions of the kingdom they have refused to embrace just because you are engaging one key effectively does not mean it will remedy for the absence of the key you have rejected are we together now yeah so it is possible that i can embrace the key that makes for spiritual growth i am growing as a believer learning god conforming to the fullness of the character of the christ but i can fail in life because it takes another set of keys for your excelling in life i can prosper financially while my spiritual life goes down because i may have accessed the keys that make for my excellence but i may not have access the keys that make for my intimacy with god so jesus said that i will give you the keys of the kingdom and let me encourage you therefore that your heart must be open to embrace the whole counsel of god there is only one thing greater than the truth the whole truth the whole truth this is why you must honor and salute your man of god for the discernment to be able to piece together different dimensions that communicate different aspects of spiritual truth to the end that you be holistically established physically speaking and nutritionally speaking there is something called balanced diet are we together and uh, nutritionists teach us that balanced diet is a healthy combination of different classes of food mixed with intelligence and intention to the end that you'll be built holistically and with 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 surgical precision a doctor or a nutritionist can literally look at you and by the deficiency he finds in your body he can tell you your excesses the areas you are over emphasizing now truth does not profit just because it is truth it must be communicated within the jurisdiction of his allocation to bless you that means you can communicate a body of truth that is beyond his scope of relevance look up please are you learning i i need you to have this background is salt important to make your meal tasty but imagine with me for instance that you have a pot of food and then you bring two hands full of salt what have you done to the meal because you have added salt beyond the portion required are we together now say you want to make fried rice and then you add a handful of rice and many cups of water and almost half bucket full of tomatoes what have you done all those ingredients are needed but not with the proportion that you are given this is the assignment of understanding to be able to allocate truths according to the desired result so that it builds you into something intentional just because you are handling a body of spiritual truth does not mean it will bless you truth can kill so when the devil tries to use a lie to kill you and you reject a lie he will give you the truth in a way that it will still kill you his assignment is for you to die it doesn't matter what weapon kills you how in the world did we get here are you blessed 
one of the indices we use to gauge spiritual maturity is the discernment to be able to put together spiritual truth in a way that produces a holistic believer thoroughly furnished so prayer has its allocation wisdom has its allocation favor has its allocation relationships have their allocation when you mix them together now it produces a life of honor and dignity balance spiritually excelling in your life rising in influence are you seeing that now so i'm trusting and praying that in this conference that the men and the women of God that God has used and continues to use in this conference as they come with different dimensions that it will help us to correct the imbalances help us to add to our lives the things that we need to add because every man of God is a spiritual chef according to Jeremiah 3 and verse 15 he says and I will give you pastors or shepherds that are according to my heart and their assignment is to feed you the name of the meal knowledge and understanding hallelujah we do not rise by mistake in this kingdom we rise by light we rise by knowledge this conference i believe seeks to bring predictability to your christian experience so you stop shadow boxing as though god did not intend for you to live a victorious life mastery is only mastery when the results can be reproduced and the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully many believers are excelling but not intentionally they are just guessing their way through many spiritual laws that produce results they cannot reproduce that's why we fear our results because we really don't know the dynamics of its manifestation I don't exactly know what I did for this to work. I know that I combined the blood of Jesus and prayer and the fire of the Holy Ghost. There was communion in that equation. And I know I prayed a bit. I touched and agreed. My seed was there. I don't know which of them worked. You have to move past that level of amateurism to a higher level of quintessence in the spirit. Where you know what key opens what door. Are you learning yeah. and one of those keys is prayer the priesthood ministry of prayer according to scripture there are three principal assignments that prayer was designed to achieve or produce in the life of the believer remember that scripture is the boundary of our study we learn god one of the ways that we know god there are four ways that the bible provides for the knowledge of god when we seek to know god there are four biblical ways number one is through scripture we know god through scripture scripture reveals his character and scripture reveals his modus operandi you can learn god as you study scripture are we together the second way we know God is by studying his names because the names of God are a capture of the multifaceted dimensions that make him God or that that are that consist in his being God so as we study the names of God we learn the dimensions of his operations number three the third way we know God is by studying Jesus the Bible calls Jesus the express image of the invisible God so jesus christ came he walked upon the earth as a verification system for everything we have been told about god so that whatever we learned about god through the prophets whatever we learned about god through history the old testament for instance we would have to cross check with the life of jesus to believe it so if the bible says god is love we have a right to doubt it until we verify that statement in the life of jesus if the Bible says God is all-powerful, we have a right to doubt it no matter what prophet said it until we find out that Jesus Christ was a demonstration of that reality. So Jesus came as a correction to our perceptions about God. He came as a marking script, a theological reference point so that by studying Jesus, we can learn God. And then the last and the final way that the Bible 
allows us to know God is through experience. Experience is the lowest, but it is equally profitable. Job said, I have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see at thee. Are we learning? So let's go back to prayer. We're discussing prayer now. The first and in my opinion, the most important ministry of prayer in the life of a believer is as a tool for transformation. Write it down, please. More than petitions, more than receiving things from God, the real assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is as a system that sponsors your transformation. Luke chapter 9, please, from verse 29. Please write it down and you may want to read it with me if you can see it projected ready let's read together one to read and as he prayed uh-huh the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening this is jesus this is what prayer achieved in his own life as he prayed as he prayed not before he prayed while he engaged in the ministry of prayer something started happening to the fashion of his countenance something started happening to his garment the assignment of prayer more than just a tool for receiving things is for your growth and transformation when you pray you evolve to superior dimensions of yourself Prayer is a system that submits you to these spiritual transitory systems. That means bring a weak believer, just born again, weak and timid. Submit that person accurately to the ministry of prayer and you will get a stronger, higher, more discerning, more spiritually intelligent version of that believer. Are you seeing that an attack on your prayer life is an attack on the platform for your transformation that is why you find a lot of believers who have been saved for a long time but there is nothing in their life that defends the longevity of their salvation prayer the holy spirit in partnership with your spirit helping you to grow helping you in expanding your organs of interaction in the realm of the spirit if you want to be transformed you want to grow you want to rise and increase in discernment it is generally called transformation you must submit yourself to the ministry of prayer please say transformation, transformation. this is very important the real ministry of prayer is not just warfare or praying for petitions the average believer prays because he has a need and he has been taught that only god can provide the need and there is a place for that but in order of priority listen to me if the primary sponsor of your prayer life is your need you will stop praying when your needs are met this is why you find out that the more believers keep getting supplies in their lives and growing their prayer lives go down because a possibility exists that you can attain a level of success where from a human standpoint you do not have any need there is such a possibility and god desires for us to get there what then do you do with your three hours five hours i understand that you can pray for five six hours because the overwhelming presence of your needs is enough motivation to remain there <laughs> Are we together? Pain can give you energy. Oh yes, it can. And you can stay and pray and flog it out with destiny. But what then happens when the word of God is now beginning to prevail over your life and destiny? Even the Bible lets us know that we can forget God. He says, let it not be that when you have built houses and this and that has happened to you, Deuteronomy chapter 8. It says that you say, my power and the might of my hand has given me this, but thou shalt remember. It's a caution, meaning you can forget. Everyone say transformation. transformation. When you submit yourself systemically and diligently 
to the priesthood ministry of prayer especially praying in the spirit one of the ways that you frustrate the flesh is to pray in the spirit because the flesh is not given the liberty of understanding what you are saying so it is compelled to fast while you pray you see that now hmm. so you pray in the spirit and the bible lets us know that while you are praying there is a mystery to your praying in the spirit as far as your transformation is concerned that praying in the spirit you give the holy spirit the liberty to search the mind of god and bring to manifestation in your life that which is consistent in the mind of god say transformation number two very quickly the second assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is as a platform for making requests and obtaining promises that means when you desire to make requests and to obtain promises in the kingdom the bible designed prayer to be that platform that allows you to interact with the heavens to make requests and to obtain promises mark 11 and verse 24 please let's hurry up so we can pray mark 11 24 jesus was teaching and here's what he said therefore i say unto you please look up look at the scripture it says what things soever ye desire what things soever ye desire when not if ye pray when ye pray it says believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them receiving and having is in the place of prayer by the way i hope you know they are not the same thing you only have what you have received you cannot have what you have not received you see receiving is a spiritual transaction that is done by faith having means the experiential manifestation so the bible says what things soever ye desire it is in the place of prayer that you believe that you have received and you shall have it philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 6 and 7 the bible addresses the issue of anxiety it says be careful the word careful there appropriately put is anxious it doesn't just mean to be careless be anxious for nothing the bible says but in how many things everything by prayer and supplication many of you may have heard me say that it is true that prayer does not do everything but prayer must be part of everything that you do where prayer is not the key prayer becomes the hand that helps you hold the key in any case it must play a role to the opening of that door it is either prayer is the key directly or prayer helps to strengthen the hand that holds the key the bible says in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known don't assume god knows it uh -uh. let your request be made known let your request your desire to excel let it be made known your desire to have a great life let it be made known your desire to prosper let it be made known god is not afraid he's not prohibiting you from communicating your desires this is the balance to prayer because there are many believers who feel guilty making petitions and asking for requests in fact here's what the bible says he says he that told you have not asked for anything jesus is speaking he said ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full you do not need answers to prayer to have joy but you need answers to prayer to have the fullness of joy you can praise god in the midst of the storm but you cannot have the fullness of joy until your prayers are answered are we learning so prayer number two is a platform for making requests and obtaining promises and one of the ways that we engage listen when you begin to pray making petitions before god one of the classic ways that god answers your prayer is giving you a token of the manifestation of the kingdom that creates an atmosphere of peace listen the bible says the kingdom of god is in righteousness peace and joy 
that every time you see these three factors cohabiting in a life or in an atmosphere the kingdom has come within that time so when you pray you search for one or more of these when i'm praying over a request how do i know it has been answered number one by faith but number two i search for these threefold manifestations of the kingdom within my atmosphere of prayer i search for peace i search for joy and my confidence is that what i'm asking is consistent with the ways of god so righteousness has been fulfilled there are you learning now but one of the most classic ways that god speaks to men in response to their making petitions is peace psalm 85 and verse 8 learn this so you know when to stop in prayer how do i know when to stop over a request how do i know when to find rest it is not just when it manifests you can know you have received the bible says and i will hear what the lord will speak for he will speak peace peace is not just what you have it is god's language you must learn god's language he speaks peace are we learning very quickly number three what is the third assignment of prayer to the believer and in the life of the believer the third assignment of prayer is as a tool and a platform for spiritual legislation you can put decrees and creation prayer is a tool for creating realities and possibilities in the life of the believer spiritual legislation job chapter 22 and verse 8 job chapter 22 and verse 28 job 22 and verse 28 the lord is speaking to someone here i just saw light on someone and the lord is saying it's been the desire of your mother that you step into levels of the prophetic in prayer that your mother has prayed for a long time and the lord is telling me that that person i don't know whether it's inside or outside but i just saw an anointing come on that person please help the person that tonight that prayer is going to be answered it is it is a desire of your mother this is what i'm hearing and i just saw light just heading there please pay attention we'll pray shortly spiritual legislation job 22 and verse 28 those outside if you are with me shout hallelujah it says thou shall also in addition to the things you have done you shall decree a thing and it shall be established not unto the one that heard you decree unto you who made the decree don't just hear people make decrees and expect to be a beneficiary of their decrees alone that you create your possibilities out of your own decrees thou shall decree a thing oh i'm a husband and a wife my husband is praying for me the bible says there is a dimension of creation that depends on your own decree I, i'm a member my pastor is a faithful prayer warrior he prays for me there is a place for intercession but listen to me when you want to make decrees and legislate spiritually creating possibilities around your domain you must learn the art of decrees in prayer are we learning yes thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in my ears so shall i do unto who not unto your neighbor unto you who did the speaking and whatsoever adam called it that was the name so when you make decrees in prayer the lord is my light and my salvation i decree and declare my path is as a shining light don't let anybody tell you that is just baby christians talk that's how we reign in this kingdom believe me when i tell you this 
He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't just think so. Say so. This is, this is a, a, a dimension of God's kingdom that is activated through words. You are perpetually under the mercy of situations and circumstances until you know how to make decrees. You step into your shop and you begin to make decrees. You make decrees. Listen. Did Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 not tell you that we have been made unto our God kings and priests? Believe the Bible in its simplicity. Any quest for maturity that makes you to negate these truths is destroying you. The power of decrees. The power of decrees. This is the day that the Lord has made. The Bible tells you who made the day so that you know what to expect. Verify the character of the one who made the day to give you an assurance of how the day should look like. The Bible didn't say God and Satan made the day. Satan also waited for God to make the day to be part of it. This is the day. That is my revelation. That's what I believe. This is the day that the Lord exclusively made. I expect the signature of his love. I expect the signature of his wisdom. I expect, he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say the Lord. They are thoughts of peace. This is true. In the place of prayer, it affords us the opportunity to begin to create our realities. Not hope that it happens. No. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Listen, don't just get excited for nothing. I want you to really believe what I'm telling you. I can tell you why many of you do not have anything happening in your life because you have cheapened the power of creation in the place of prayer you have thought that no i'm a matured christian i shouldn't be speaking i am blessed i i live a victorious life no no before jesus died he made decrees that he will rise again if jesus did not speak he would have been surprised on the third day he did not just rise because the holy ghost came he sent a word to wait in the third day because you see words are not bound by time you can send a word into february march april these words become ushers they wait for you do you believe what i'm saying yes sir jesus your jesus kept speaking and said he would die but certainly on the third day he will come back so when it was the third day the word was activated have you spoken to your february did you speak to your tomorrow or are you waiting for someone to just tell you something no. that when men say there is a casting down I, I i select from the provisions that the word allows and i declare that for me it shall be that there is a lifting up that a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side and none will hurt me with my eyes i will see and i will believe i will behold the reward of the wicked i live a very busy schedule and i travel a lot and i know that one of the easiest ways for the devil to kill anybody is through accidents and through all of these things so i have to find the scriptures that create the basis of my fortification i can't assume that just because i'm a preacher no the realm of the spirit does not respect status it respects your your engaging the truths of god's word the Lord therefore he makes even my enemies to be at peace with me in the name of Jesus my path is as a shining light I shine brighter brighter no better yesterday in the name of Jesus the fullness of my days I fulfill 
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me, dear people. Words and food are the two ways Jesus taught us to live. Read your Bible. That when it has to do with man and living, you live off two things. Number one, bread. Number two, words. Man shall not live by bread alone, but in addition to bread, add words to your bread if you want to live. Don't just eat and believe that you will live. Words, words, words. I carry the favor of God in the name of Jesus Christ. All who see me desire to bless me. I carry the favor of the Lord. Distinguished by his wisdom. Distinguished by his power. This is what I believe. Hallelujah. Listen. Can I tell you? Your realities are not just defined by what scripture says. They are defined by the truths of scripture you understand and you can appropriate through this priesthood ministry of prayer. Look what prayerlessness robs you. It's a risk to step into a life that you did not send words to usher you into. It's a risk. Pastors, we have to pray don't take ministry for granted pray that leads me to the next point what is the next assignment of prayer number four warfare and intercession let me share with you something in two or three minutes and then we'll pray the prayer ministry was designed by god to be a tool and a platform for warfare and intercession John chapter 10 and verse 10. Satan is called a name that you should not forget. He is called the thief. Someone say the thief. There are many names that Satan is called. He is called devil. He is called Satan. That means the accuser. Is that true? He is called that old serpent according to revelations. But Jesus himself calls him the thief. Indicate by raise of hand if you desire to be best friends with a thief. Indicate by show of hands if you are interested in being close to a thief. Jesus calls Satan the thief, not a thief. There are many, but there is none like him. The Bible is clear about the, 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 the dexterity of his ministry that the thief cometh not. Do you know what that means? You never see Satan around a place until there is something to steal, something to kill. So when Satan comes around you, he has helped you verify that there is something in your life that is worth stealing, worth killing, and worth destroying. That means Satan does not waste his time. If you see him near your family, near your ministry, near your destiny, he has come because there is something that is worth stealing, killing, and destroying Jesus said but I am come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly Satan is called the thief first John 5 19 gives us a very important information about this cosmos this world system and the world that we live in it says and we know that we are of God please help me complete that scripture ready one to read and the whole world lie it my room or my 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 shoes lie on a carpet that means the carpet must be larger than my shoes is that true to be able to lie on it he's telling you that the whole world wickedness is beneath and the whole world is on it that means no matter where you run to wickedness has stretched far enough to wait for you He's giving you that information that your location is not necessarily an advantage by default. Wickedness is everywhere. 
first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 i pray god is speaking to someone tonight first peter 5 and verse 8 be sober apostle peter is teaching us now he says be sober the next statement is be discerning vigilant alive in the spirit sensitive he says why because your adversary not the one quarreling in the office that's a puppet the devil that is the real enemy the one disturbing you in the office is only a slave to an influence bigger than him your real adversary is the devil as a roaring lion the bible says he walketh about seeking whom he may devour hmm. ephesians chapter 6 from verse 11 ephesians chapter 6 he says put on not part the whole armor you need the whole armor if you are to stand against the wiles of the devil that means satan has perfected the skill of stealing destroying and all of that that you will need to shield yourself with the whole armor of god I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustains me. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head listen when you see people excel in life and ministry it's not just because satan has stopped attacking them they have mastered the art of using prayer as a weapon of warfare and spiritual intercession woe betides any believer who does not perfect the understanding of warfare and intercession especially in this end time you will become a victim of a plethora of casualties it is true it is true mm. second corinthians chapter 10 very quickly second corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3 let's start from verse 3 second corinthians 10 and verse 3 it says for though we walk in the flesh this is a very powerful information that paul is giving us that even though our interaction is within the realm the three-dimensional realm the realm of the, se the senses the flesh we do not war after the flesh verse 4 for the weapons of our warfare he says so we have weapons that they are not carnal they are not man-made but they are mighty through god here's what they do to the pulling down of strongholds next verse it says casting down imaginations is the greek word yazar and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ warfare there is a real devil and is determined to make your 2022 miserable if you allow him i hate to be the bearer of bad news but i have to be honest with you he will not stand and watch your marriage thrive he will not stand and watch your finances thrive he will not stand and watch your children go out in the morning and return back in peace but thanks be to god which always causes us to triumph our confidence is in the fact that we have been given the arsenals of victory when it has to do with the ministry of warfare and intercession i wish i had time there there are there are there are certain truths that we have to understand when it has to do with the ministry of warfare and intercession 
The first thing you have to understand is the three principal access points. Satan has only three access points in the life of the believer. Number one, covenants. Number two, disobedience. Number three, ignorance. This is the only access point from Genesis to Revelation. Every time you see Satan attempts to prevail over a person, a people, a family, it is one or more of these three access points. Covenants, systems of authorization that can outlive the person who initiated it. There are rules of engagement. Number two, disobedience. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your own obedience is complete. Everything responds to you in this kingdom at the instance of obedience. And then number three, ignorance. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. Ignorance can shortchange you from the fullness of the victorious potential that comes with this faith life that you are a part of. Hallelujah. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 18. Six, my people, he says, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge. So he says, I commend you to God. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Now, brethren, he says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace what does it do it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance the inheritance is only when you are built up because an heir for as long as he's a child that he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all warfare and intercession and when it has to do with our weapons of victory there are essentially three of them that are given to us according to scripture. Number one is the power of the blood. The blood is the basis for our access and our liberty. Every time there is a legal access upon which Satan attempts to accuse, to thrive, to sabotage our destinies, the blood is the weapon that is engaged. The Bible says it sustains the ability to speak better things, even than the blood of Abel. Isaiah chapter 49 from verse 24 talks about a certain kind of captivity called lawful captivity. Lawful captivity means there is a willful participation of the victim that provides an authorized basis for the oppression. And it says, even that state has a way of escape. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captives delivered? It's a question. And then it says, thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty. So it doesn't matter what happened before I was born. It doesn't matter what I was part of. There is a provision in the economy of God with men that through the blood of Jesus, I can break away from the legal access. It's true. There are many people today who are victims of all kinds of demonic patterns. And, and I'm glad you see that your man of God is one who God has graced and trusted so much as he helps people through issues. You see sincere people who are helplessly products of patterns that they themselves cannot explain. Hmm. The blood is the weapon. The blood is powerful because the blood is the symbol of God's mercy. That we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae and he told them in chapter 2 and verse 14. He says, blotting out every handwriting, Colossians 2, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances 
that was against us which was contrary to us he took it by the way and nailed it to the cross so when the devil comes and says no one has risen in your family and that it will be like father like son you can stand understanding the ministry of the blood i plead 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 the blood the blood eternal saving blood i don't have to cry that's my testimony for he has paid the price satan you are right that my forefathers worship idols but look well on the cross you will find me there also he didn't just die I died in him the Bible says so it was Apostle Paul who said I have been crucified except you are not a Christian it is written there when the devil comes to you you don't tell him I think you don't say they said the only language is it is written even when Jesus prayed and fasted when Satan came he didn't say are you not seeing that I've not eaten no it is it was written so that it would not be changed written written your assignment in warfare is to make your life become what the bible says should be in experience that means if you do not understand how to engage the blood in prayer let me tell you there are yokes that may never live your life I come from a region where you cannot last up to three years in ministry if at all you even start no you can't last three years in ministry something must bring you back to look like the spirit of the city in the land of the gatherings there were some people who were prospering and the spirits that made them prosper were in one man the moment the spirits left their business too followed so they were not just thriving oh dear i wish what i was saying were a lie i would have just apologized and said sorry but what i'm saying is very serious because many of you you are seated here and you are listening to me you desire to rise to the fullness of your prophetic potential zechariah 1 18 son of man what seest thou please give it to us as we prepare to wrap up I lifted up my eyes and behold I saw four horns a horn is a symbol of authority please look up let's read it verse 19 and I said to the angel that talked with me what be these and he answered me these are the horns which have scattered my praise my promise and my peace these are the three things that the horns attack Judah is your praise. Israel is your promise. Jerusalem comes from Salem, your peace. That these horns attack these three dimensions of your life. 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. And he said, what have these horns come to do? He said, these are the horns which have scattered Judah. Help me continue. So that no man did lift up stop you see why i raised that song that there are people who do not rise some of you have been in lagos for decades you should not be at this level based on your sacrifice it is true you can read it in scripture that you've been called out of every tribe and tongue but you see there is the prophetic speaking of god the finished work from christ's perspective it takes faith and engaging this truth to make it manifest in your life otherwise you will keep reading things that your life will not capture their reality i got to a point in my life where i made up my mind i said i must be able to engage the word of god so that my life will become an expression of the truthfulness of the finished work of christ warfare and intercession can i tell you this 
there is something about the prayer ministry when you engage in warfare and intercession genuinely with understanding and within the boundary of scripture you engage with the blood number two you engage with the word the second weapon of victory that has been given to us is the word john 1 1 in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with god three says that all things were made by him and without him that means outside of his influence and participation was not anything made don't expect anything to be made in your life if the word is not part of the equation that leads to it without him was not anything made that was made the power of the word you have to know how to bring the word you have to know how to engage the word many people do not know how to engage the word and then number three of course very quickly is the power of the name john 14 12 to 14 the power of the blood the power of the word and the power that backs that office the name i say unto you verily verily he says i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i shall do he shall do also greater works than this shall he do because i go to my father and whatsoever ye shall ask not just according to your desire there is an office you shall ask in my name make sure your asking is in my name asking in my name does not just mean to say in jesus name saying in jesus name is just a spiritual and psychological way of reminding you that the owner of that name is jesus but the name is not jesus the name that really brings the answer is not jesus jesus is the name of the owner of that office the bible says wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name so that was not the name jesus was given to him when he was born the name is not even jesus yeshus is the name you see there are footballers today who are called jesus is that true there are mexicans who are called jesus i'm not saying jesus is wrong i hope you understand now this is a believers meeting there is a name an office that was given to him and according to Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 the Bible says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus he now begins to give you the entire exegesis of his journey from heaven considering himself to be equal with God not robbery but that he stripped himself of that authority and that ranking and he made himself of no reputation took upon him the form of a servant and he was made in the likeness of man eight being found in the fashion of man the bible says he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death on the cross he says wherefore god had so highly exalted him and gave him a name and that that name is above every other name what is the character of that name 10 that at the name of jesus he didn't say the mention of it you see the mention of it is not wrong but the revelation the consciousness of that name every knee should bow of things in heaven earth and under the earth and then he says 11 now every tongue should confess that that jesus who became the christ when he met the holy spirit has now received the name called lord that's the name the name is lord when peter was preaching in the day of pentecost remember how he wrapped up his sermon he said that same jesus who you have crucified has now been made lord and christ that was the end of his sermon and the bible says they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent lord means absolute owner you are given an office you see how 
the psalmist saw it in Psalm 24. The earth is the there are four things that you must have to be ruler. Number one, the earth. Give us Psalm 24 and verse 1 as we pray. Number two, the fullness, the resources. Number three, the mind control system. Number four, the inhabitants. Anybody that captures this has exerted dominion over the territory. And the Bible says every of those four belong to him. The earth the natural expanse of land number two the fullness the resources number three the walls the systems that control the thoughts and the behaviors of the people number four is them that dwell therein every terrorist and those who train people in terrorism this is the assignment when you come into a territory capture the earth the landmass number two capture the resources number three create a system that controls the thinking of the people and number four you will naturally bring the inhabitants these are ancient principles that were used even in modern history to enslave men so the bible says if you are truly to be lord you must have access to these four dimensions the earth the resources the mind control system and the inhabitants and jesus was given all so to come in the name of jesus means that you come with that consciousness that there is an authority and there is an office that backs me he said blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord so if i speak in the name i speak with the consciousness that everything that needs to cooperate to make my word not look like it was left alone is engaged and comes into motion so if I pray and I say in Jesus name, I'm helping myself and helping those who listen to me that the Lord I am talking about is not just the landlord. It's not just the one in court. I'm talking about Jesus who is Lord. When you walk in the consciousness of the Lordship of Jesus, then you can command authority over principalities and powers. Hallelujah. Because true spiritual power is tested in this one litmus test. You say it and see it. If you cannot say it and see it, it is not power. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4. This is the ultimate test for genuine spiritual power and authority. He created the heavens and the earth. He says the earth was dark and void, formless. Is a Hebrew word, tohu wa bohu. Confusion and chaos. Verse 3. And God said, Light be. And there was light. And God said, Light be. And there was light. Verse 4. And God saw the light that it was good. So if you tell me you have spiritual power, I don't need to doubt you. Just speak if you say it and it happens and what happens is good and you can see it you are walking in power remember the centurion when he was talking with Jesus he said I am a man under authority I understand power I say unto one go and he goes because of the government and the name that backs me so you too, Jesus I discern that you are not on your own and Jesus said who taught you where did you learn this lecture from he marveled at his insight believers we were not left alone we may look weak but there is an office that jealously defends us it is a name we have been given so God sent you to Lagos and you say God but you didn't give me money check well he gave you a name go with it you packed your bags and left the name carry the name and watch the wonder walking power he sent them two by two and he said go in my name and they returned and said ah even the demons were subject to us through thy name he said that's it you got it thy name we excel in ministry through his name we excel in life and destiny through his name oh warm jacob you are not alone there is a name that defends you 
many of you even from an earthly standpoint you can use the name of your pastor your man of god and there are doors that can open in this church if you are seated at the back and your pastor sends and says pick somebody from outside and come and keep him here whether you like the person or not is not the issue there is a name that you must honor and you can frown at the person while you still obey so when we make decrease in the name we don't need to have a relationship with the situation and circumstance they have to obey it is true let me five minutes and let's pray stand up on your feet please creator of the universe what can't you do what can't you do jesus creator of say creator of the universe what can't you what can't you do, Jesus? The name above, say the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? You are able. You are Jesus. So that those who have been asleep spiritually in terms of prayer, he said, Awake thou that sleepest. Awake, awake, awake. Don't just wake your mind, your spirit man. Now I'm seeing that the devil has kept me down. In the next two or three minutes, I'd like you to just find a place and pray. Pray and generate power in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. The fervent, he says, effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much. Someone pray. David's Christian Center pray. To a more superior dimension of yourself pray and make decrees hela katos kate pranta katoshiata embrekete kataba kato kate basikata where are the watchers the men and the women of prayer Pray, enough is enough, new season in my destiny, someone is praying, every chain that has held me, the Lord rebuke you, Ministry, I command that door, a father, open, Gita and Tita, Lagos, be open unto me. Pray. 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 Decree and declare that thou mightest be justified. Please pray just a few minutes outside make sure you're praying those of you following online engage in the spirit pray atmosphere sheep now chains be broke break out holy spirit Shift 
the climate over your life. Shift the climate over your ministry. Shift the climate over your family. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Acts chapter 12, we are praying from verse 1. My God, I sense such an anointing in this place. Acts chapter 12, watch this. It says, now about that time, the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Next verse. He said, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. These were the days of unliving bread. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, Watch what he did to Peter. He put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending that by Easter he can bring him forth to the people. Peter can be your favor. Peter can be your next level. Peter can be your influence. Trapped and kept. But, verse 5, read with me if you're a Christian. It says, therefore, Peter therefore was kept in prison. Go ahead and read. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Are you ready to pray? A prayer of release. Everything that has been tied down, I decree and declare, be released right now. Go ahead and pray. I declare jubilee, jubilee, jubilee over my destiny, jubilee over ministry, a season of the release in the name of Jesus. Outside, pray. E prekete skotu bash kati balantos kia. Krope katos kote berente ketia. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is a grace I'm trusting God for. That will come on someone's life let me show you that grace we're still on that scripture acts chapter 12. the bible says verse 6 please listen carefully that when herod would have brought him forth the same night as he was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison uh-huh he says behold the angel of the lord came upon him and light shine in the prison and he smote peter by the side and raised him up saying arise quickly and the chains fell off from his hand follow carefully and the angel said to him gird thyself and bind thy sandals so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me in response to prayer verse 9 may god open your eyes and he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel he thought he was in a vision verse 10 he says they passed three kinds of gates let me teach you a mystery there was the first gate that they passed he was out of prison but he was not yet free they passed a second gate he was far from oppression but he was not yet enjoying liberty. The Bible says they came to a mysterious gate called the iron gate that leads to the city. Your city is your place of influence. That there is a gate that the moment that gate is open, the city must hear your voice. Listen to me. I want to pray for you. And I want you to pray first. This gate you see has kept many people. That there is an iron gate 
that opens when that gate opens your voice must be heard there are businessmen there are sincere preachers anointed and great but the iron gate still stops their visibility are you ready to pray he said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder you are going to open your mouth that by the blood of the lamb the gates that must open for your visibility in 2022 command it to be open hither and thither go ahead and pray the iron gate Shabakatakatosia in ministry in business the gates of destiny that must be opened so that those that were sent to your grace will know that you are there territorial iron gates financial iron gates ministerial iron gates a father be open a father be open a father be open hallelujah hallelujah let me give us one last scripture first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18 paul was speaking to the church in thessalonica and he shared with them a very deep mystery please read with me if you can see it projected ready one to read wherefore we would have come unto you even i paul once and again wherefore your favor would have reached you since last year wherefore it kept trying what you are looking for has also been looking for you but satan hindered us the helper of your destiny long instructed by god to come and hold your hand in ministry but satan please don't think you are wasting your time tonight satan he says i paul once and again i tried when you prayed it's not that god did not answer the man who would partner with the spirit to come to you satan hindered us the financial helpers that would have been sent by god to make the work easy for you it looks like god just left you destitute but satan are you about to declare now that in the name of jesus everything that stands as a hindrance to the helpers of your destiny and the virtues and the graces that must set you free to excel in 2022 in the name of jesus satan the lord rebuke you open your mouth and pray the hindrance is gone the lord rebuke you Satan, the Lord rebuke you. 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 Satan Hallelujah Let me speak over your life our time is gone Even so come Yeshua come Even so Come and take your bride away. How my soul longs to see your face, my Lord. Even so, even so, come, Yeshua, come. Hallelujah. Listen to me. 
God put it in the heart of your man of God and it will take God opening his heart for you to see every true shepherd desires the rising and the excelling of those committed to him. At the level that God has honored and lifted your man of God, most of his needs is not for himself again. Any genuine shepherd, there are pastors here, your greatest joy is not your personal excellence. It's to see that those who God has committed to you rise and become all that was in the mind of God for them. Hallelujah. I want to lend my voice and my faith with the angel over this house and speak over your life. Please, I want you to give your best. Do not miss tomorrow's session. You can connect by faith. And I want you to make sure that even after this conference, look for these videos and listen to them again. If you must buy it, buy it. Whatever you have to do, get it and sit down. You will be surprised that you have not gotten a major part of what was shared this night. There is the hearing that brings awareness, but there is the hearing that brings understanding. We have been commanded to bless, and I want to bless you. To bless you means to empower you to excel. Amen. 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 Every coldness and lukewarmness in your prayer life. There are people here, it was not like this with God. Something just happened. Perhaps the vicissitudes in life brought you down to a point where your prayer life has gone down. In the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Pastor Kingsley and we declare over you, fresh fire upon your prayer altar. Help them please. Fresh fire upon your prayer altar in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The unction for discernment. I'm seeing the number 12. Let it come upon you right now. Take that grace. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare. Take that grace for discernment. Supernatural discernment. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Darkness from a distance looks like light. It takes discernment to know what is light. Let me speak over every closed door. By the power that raised Christ from the dead and by the privilege of priesthood, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I speak every door that has been closed over your life. In the name of Jesus, I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I speak over that door. A father, be open now. 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 By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open now. With understanding, you order the seasons. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your peace. Everyone ordained to lift your hands in this season. Helpers of destiny. I don't know where they are. 
but I prophesy to the north I speak to the south I speak to the east and the west wherever the helpers of your destiny are between now and the month of March I command them to appear in your life I command that they show up in your life Let me speak over your finances. Don't say it does not matter. It does. It does. There is a prophetic dimension to wealth. By this time tomorrow, he said. What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you, hey, not like you. Into the darkness you shine. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes, out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, not like. Davis Christian Center, your God is mighty. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any. Our God is healer, our God is healer. Our God is healer. Our God is healer. Hear me. Please listen, I'm wrapping up. When it has to do with the subject of supplies and abundance, there is a place for value and productivity. There is a place for relationships and all of these factors. But in the kingdom, we are not left without an advantage. There is a prophetic dimension to wealth and abundance. It says, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Herein lies the pride of our world today. I know that the prophetic has been abused. There are imbalances here and there. But within the boundary of accuracy and the boundary of scripture, the prophetic can work wonders. I want to pray over someone. You will marvel and wonder at what God does in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I call upon the God of my covenant that between now and the next 90 days according to the mystery of the ark of God in the house of Obed Edom standing in faith with your man of God in the name of Jesus by the privilege of this election of grace I speak to your finances experience strange favor <laughs> strange favor supernatural abundance in the name of Jesus I compel men and systems and structures I command them to respond favorably Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty I forbid emptiness from your life Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the B part says and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her not some all I pray for you anyone who looks upon you from tonight may that glory that is upon you compel them to stand by you to help you Let me specially pray for all those who have stood by the man of God in prayers, in love, in support, in partnership. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. God is not a fraudster. God is not a scammer. I stand in faith with him and I declare, my God, the God of this vision and this commission, 
may he supply your needs according to his riches in glory even by Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus you will get jobs you did not apply for people who have forgotten you I open the book of remembrance for your sake in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you finally the grace for speed that God would take 10 years and put it in one month for you believe it believe it and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab I speak to ministries here I speak to businesses here in the name of the Lord God who called me I prophesy to you in one month receive the result of five years dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kene kata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.